Being able to bypass antivirus software is an important step to be able to deploy a payload on a target's computer. Today we're going to learn how to do just that using a command line tool called Graffiti on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. The deployment of a payload is the most critical step in any cyber attack. That's why it is important to make sure that this step goes off without a hitch. If we send the command in raw string, the antivirus software on a computer might flag it as malicious and stop the attack dead in its tracks. That's why if we encode, if we encode the attack in base64, we might fool the antivirus software and think that it's completely safe and the command can run seamlessly. On this, this episode, we're going to use Graffiti to encode a Python one-liner, which will create a reverse shell on the victim's computer, essentially granting the attacker remote terminal access to the computer. All you're going to need to follow this tutorial is Python 2.7 installed on your computer. If you run into any problems, you can check out the article linked in the description. Let's get started. So to get started, the first thing we're going to want to do is navigate to the GitHub repository and clone the repository itself. So we can go ahead and check out the article linked in the description and the GitHub link is right there. And then now all we have to do is copy the repository's URL and clone it into a directory of our, of our choosing on our computer. We'll go ahead and give it a second or two, and it's already done cloning the folder. So now we're just going to want to change our directory to the graffiti folder. Now we can see the Python folder or the Python file right here is what we're going to be using to obfuscate our payloads. So before you get started, it's important to note that graffiti was actually written in Python 2.7, not the more common Python 3. So to make sure that you're using the right version of Python, you can go ahead and type in Python into your command prompt. And as you can see, this is actually Python 3.7. If we want to use um, Python 2, which is um, compatible with Graffiti, in my case, I have to type in Python 2 just like that. And as you can see, it's Python 2.17, which will actually be able to run this program correctly. So now that that's sorted, let's go ahead and run just the help command to see what commands Graffiti has to offer. So it's Python 2 and then the name of the Python file and tack H for help. And these are all the possible tools we have at our disposal to use with Graffiti. So the first thing I want to do is tack L, which is going to list all the possible payloads that we have to, um, that we can use with Graffiti. And these do come with the GitHub repository itself. So if we type in Python 2, graffiti.py, tack L, and it's going to list, it's sorted in two categories. So these are all, um, payloads that can be deployed on Windows computers, obviously, and then these are ones that can be deployed on Linux computers. Today, we're going to be focusing on Linux computers and specifically on commands that will create a reverse shell on the victim's computer. And so because I want to encode a Python one, I'm going to go ahead and see that this one's a Python script and it is uh, socket reverse, which is what we're going to use to create the reverse shell. So this will be the directory that we'll specify to the program. So we're just going to we'll go ahead and copy that to our, oops, we're going to go ahead and copy that to our clipboard. Um, now the next thing I want to do is see what possible encoding that graffiti has to use. So to do that, it's just Python 2, graffiti.py, and then tack capital V, lowercase c. And then this is just going to list all the codecs that we can possibly encode um, the one-liners in and the languages the languages that are compatible with that. So today we're going to do um, raw and base64. So raw is basic human readable text and base64 is just um, encoded base64. And so as you can see, both raw and base64 are Python compatible, so that should be no issue today. But um, it's important to note, so say you wanted to deploy a PowerShell sc um, script because you were attacking a Windows computer. It's important to note that you can't use um, XOR, AppBash, or AES256 with PowerShell or ROT13. I'm not familiar with any of these, but I'm sure each different encoding has their own strengths and weaknesses. So now that we know what encoding we're going to use, so first we're going to use raw, just so we can actually see what the one-liner does. And now that we know um, the directory of the one-liner, which is right here, it's already saved on my clipboard, we can go and actually go ahead and actually run graffiti and um, create the one-liner. So I'm just going to run the program as always. And then I'm going to specify tack P, which is the payload, and that's what I saved to my clipboard. And then tack C, which is the encoding method. 
and then first we're gonna do raw and then lowercase l capital H for listening host and then that is just gonna be um, in this case it's just gonna be the local IP of the computer I'm currently using because I want the victim to connect to this computer creating the reverse shell. So I'm just gonna specify 192.168.1.216, which is this computer's local IP address. And finally, I'm gonna specify the local port. This can be whatever you want, but in this case, it's, I'm just gonna make it 4321, just so it's easy to remember. If you go ahead and run that, it's instantly just gonna generate the customized, oh, uh, the customized one-liner. So as you can see, this is doing a whole bunch of scary stuff, and if antivirus saw the computer trying to run it, it might stop it because it recognizes this as malicious and then it will stop the exploit dead in its tracks. So instead of using raw encoding, let's try base64 encoding. So all to do, all we have to change is use the previous command and change the tax C from raw to base64. Make sure it didn't miss a space. Okay, good. And so now we can see that it's basically just sending the computer a whole bunch of garbage which if you decoded it in base64 would actually translate to the proper script and that's why it's important to include this dot um, encode dot decode method so now you can actually use this instead of this human readable format to deploy to the computer hopefully bypassing the computer's antivirus software increasing the likelihood that the attack is successfully deployed and in case you don't want to type in this command again you can just use python 2 graffiti attack lowercase v capital C and then this is basically um, a cache of all of the payloads that we've run through graffiti before and as you can see it's just the two that we just did and for some reason you want to hide that you have a bunch of you don't want anyone to know that you have a bunch of um, obfuscated payloads saved on your computer um, graffiti makes it easy to erase this um, data from computer with python 2 p.py and then capital W and then it just wipes the um, the cache of all the one-liners. And as you can see, there is no trace that you even generated these malicious one-liners and people are less likely to find out that um, you're a hacker. And there you go. That's some basic functionality of Graffiti. As we just saw, Graffiti can easily encode a Python one-liner that can then be used to create a reverse shell on a victim's computer. While this can bypass some simple defense mechanisms, as antivirus software becomes more sophisticated, we're gonna to have to depend on more extreme obfuscation methods to deploy payloads. It is important to remember to only deploy payloads on computers that you're trusted to use. If you run into any problems with this tutorial, you can check out the article linked in the description. And if you have any ideas for a future video, you can hit me up on Twitter at Nick Gottschall. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.